Okie dokie, we are live. I'm just doing a few tests uh, just so I know that uh, I can hear myself and it's all all fine. But thank you all so much for joining me. Um, we're going to have a really lovely couple of hours drawing this tiger's eye. Um, just wait a second until it actually comes live. Well, here we go. Here we go. So. Okie dokie, we are live. Right. So I'm going to turn my sound down because I know that there is sound now because I can see it. Um, so we have got so many people here um, already, which is absolutely amazing. Um, really, really happy to see all of you here today. And we are going to be drawing this tiger's eye uh, here. It's on drafting film. How I've set mine up, I'll just show you before we start. So I've got a scratchy piece of drafting film here. <laughs> I've got my printout underneath. I've got my piece of drafting film stuck um, to the printer paper and then I've also got a, um, a clean sheet of paper that I can put underneath if I want to see what it looks like without the line art. So I don't need to worry about transferring it, I don't need to worry about rubbing anything out, it's just there and it's a really, really great way of using drafting film. If you haven't used drafting film before, please don't worry. Um, it's quite a strange surface because it's very, very, very smooth and you might be thinking, oh my goodness, how are we going to get all of this pencils and everything like this down, uh, you know, on the, um, on the surface, but it's, it's absolutely fine. Um, you know, it, it's a really, really lovely surface. The key is to go really lightly with your pencil. So use really nice light pressure, but it's also for me about... Um, not worrying about using too many layers um, because we don't really need to. So it's about choosing your your pencils carefully, your colours carefully and everything. And that's what I'm going to uh, explain uh, today for you. So we're going to be drawing this tiger's eye. Uh, really lovely subject, looks incredibly complicated. And actually there are some, some fabulous techniques and tips on drafting film where you can get some looking, you can get something looking realistic really, really easily. Um, so yeah, if you don't have any of the colours, honestly, please don't worry, just use what you have. Um, in fact, I think I should have put a burnt sienna in there as well, actually, and I don't think we've put that in there, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Use what you have. You'll be absolutely fine. Whether we get to do all of the fur around it, um, not sure, but we re I really want to concentrate on the eye, getting that eye lovely and smooth. So we're going to get started. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take that off there because I don't want to, um, that's it, I'll just put it on there, that's fine. So we're going to get started and what I want to start off with first of all is actually the dark indigo, so a dark blue. Um, you might have dark indigo, you might have a different dark blue, the dark indigo is the 157, polychromos 157. You can see there it's not super super sharp, it's kind of I've been using it on something else. I don't need to sharpen it. Um, and I want to bring all of the dark areas around the eyeball in first. So one of the things that I do, and this is purely because of how it ends up looking, <laughs> I do the outside of the eye first, and then I do the eyeball. I don't know whether you've seen, if you just do an eyeball, it ends up looking like some kind of weird bird. And then I can't get that image out of my head. And then all I'm seeing is a weird bird, um, you know, little sort of round bit and a beak. I don't want that in my drawings. <laughs> so I do the outside first. The other advantage of doing the outside first is that you can actually get all of the sizing and the shapes and everything like that correct. Luckily, we've, we've already got our line art here, which is great. One thing to be a little bit aware of with the line art, um, you can get very easily uh, confused with which line is which. So always work with your reference. Sometimes, even though you've got the most complicated line art, you're still going to sit there and work out, oh, hang on a second, where does this bit go? Where does that bit go? So we're going to take our um, dark indigo and we're going to make a start. We're going to make a start uh, sort of kind of up here. Um, I'm going to bring the blue in, and then we're going to bring black in, and then we're going to start building it, and then we'll do the, the middle of the eye. So really light pressure. If you've not used draft, drafting film before, if you just bring the corner of your film up 
Okay, so this is the corner of my film here. And you um, go on the, use your pencil on the edge there. That's the pressure that I want you to use so you're not pushing the film down. So you're just using really nice light pressure, uh, not pressing the film down too much. So you get a light colour on the top there. We will increase our pressure, but those initial layers, we want that really nice light pressure. So I'm going to take my dark blue and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to start to colour in the line here. So nice, gentle, light pressure. Because I haven't got a super sharp pencil, um, I actually get quite a fat line that goes down. And what we want is we want it to be nice and even. So really, really nice and even. So just gently bringing that through there. I might need to bring in uh, another piece of film under uh, the film that I've got here so it's not picking up the texture of the paper, but I'm going to see how I go. It, um, if I put another piece of film in, it will just make the line art look a little bit fainter. So we'll see how I go. And once we've got a little bit more down, I might just do that. And then we can see the line art kind of, but it'll give me a smoother surface to work on. Don't worry too much if it's not like super, super um, even, um, but you, you want to get it so that the, the colour is, is relatively even. And we're just going to bring that colour in along here. Gosh, it's really warm here. I've got my fan on um, behind me. Hopefully you can't hear it, but it's, um, it is really warm here. My fingers are going all really sticky. We always say it's really warm in England and it's probably like, you know, not very warm at all. <laughs> We're just not used to it. So just coming in through here. And then I'm just going to bring it round this side here as well. Now these initial steps, initial stages, they do look a little bit strange. Um, you know, we need to expect that. I think if you have an expectation of things, you know, you understand the process and you know, all right, this is this is part of the process. It's going to look a bit weird. Happy with that. No problem. If you start putting pencil down and you're 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 thinking that it's going to look super realistic within sort of a couple of minutes, then that's a, not a good expectation to have because it's not going to happen. And then you're going to start getting sad about it. So, you know, have that expectation that to begin with, it's going to look a bit rubbish. So we're just coming here. You can see I've started to kind of go uh, round and round with my pencil strokes, maybe a little bit up and down. I tend to be quite sketchy with my initial strokes um, on any surface that I use. With drafting film, we do have to be careful with that texture. Um, if you go a little bit crazy and you can see all of the sort of scribbly marks and everything, you're going to get those scribbly marks coming through all of your layers. It's just how um, it's just how drafting film works. It's a really lovely surface. Um, I'm on to, I've been using it for quite a while actually, um, portrait I'm working on at the minute is on drafting film, the one that I did before that was on drafting film. So currently my favourite surface is drafting film, I'm very fickle. Um, that's what happens when you're using a surface for, uh, you know, multiple portraits, then it, it ends up being your, your favourite. So I'm just going to bring this, uh, the, the blue sort of kind of round there a little bit down to this bit down here, down here. We've got all of this weird stuff going on down here as well, but I'm just going to bring that um, down into here. So there's definitely a blueiness to the to the black and the dark indigo is going to give the black a little bit more richness. You can, of course, just use black if you want. Nothing wrong with that at all. Um, and very often in my portraits, I'll just use black usually because it's in my hand and I'm very lazy. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's usually why I tend to use black, but it, it works well. And of course, there are lots of different kinds of blacks, um, but uh, polychromos, I think, are, a, are a, you know, I, I quite like the polychromos black. It's not the blackest black, but, you know, it's not bad. So we're just going to bring that little bit in there. Now, you might be going, oh, well, hang on a second, there's some highlighty bits in there and all of that kind of stuff. The, the joy of using drafting film means that we can actually use subtraction techniques and take out those little highlights after we've, take, after we've put the dark elements in. So we don't actually have to isolate highlights like you would on traditional surfaces. Um, and that's another reason why I really, really like this surface. It, al it, it almost makes it a more um, 
understandable process. You know, when you for me, when I'm drawing fur, I tend to sort of start from the inside out um, and kind of put those final bits in on the top. And you can do that with the drafting film. It works really, really nicely. Um, OK, so next bit, I'm just going to bring a, a little tiny bit of the blue into here. Can you see that dark area above the um, the top of the eye? Um, it's it's there's eye behind that, but I think it's more eyelash. So I'm just going to bring a little bit of a sort of a sketchiness in. Um, we will use the slice tool to bring those uh, those those white uh, eyelashes in. But I just want to bring that darker bit in there. Um, you can see just nice soft pencil marks in over the top of that line art. Um, and then I'm going to fill the pupil in with the blue as well. So we're just going to come in nice and gently. Don't be tempted to go too hard at this point because we do want to get the black in over the top. With drafting film, if you're using double sided matte, you can use the back of the film. Again, really, really useful um, if you want to add extra richness to your work. I've even seen people do the whole drawing on one side, then flip it over and literally repeat the whole drawing on the other side. Um, incredible depth i mean amazing depth or even doing like graphite on one side and color on the other it just really really boosts the values and everything like that um okay and then now what i want to do is just bring a a, a bit of a line through here so we're just going to bring a the, the the dark blue again the dark indigo we're just going to bring it round here nice and gently um, we don't want to we don't want to put too much in here because we've got that sort of nice light blue color coming through. I'm just going to bring a little bit of that darker element in there. Nice and gently. Bring a little bit of that dark in there. I'm gonna I am gonna leave that little bit. We're, we're gonna we're gonna use the um, the slice tool just to bring the light area out there. There's a couple of nice little light highlights in there. Um, okay, so we've got a really nice outline of this uh, eye now. Um, and what do I want to do now? So I think now, because we've kind of got a bit of the outline, I want to start building the, the inside of the eye, which is quite complicated. So I'm going to start with um, the Caput Morton Violet and the uh, uh, Walnut Brown. So the Walnut Brown is 177. If you don't have it, don't worry. It's just a warmish brown. Um, you know, it's it's got a little bit of red in it. And then the Caput Morton Violet is 263. I've just got my, this is a, well, it's a pencil holder, but it's not a pen, it's a pencil extender, but it's actually the middle of a of a poo bag a dog <laughs> so the, the the poo bags that I get are in rolls and this is the middle of them so I use those for my pencil holders I can't remember who told me about that was it Judy Judy Wysocki I think or did she get it from somebody else I don't know I steal everybody's uh, everybody's tips about pencil holders um but it's, they really really work well so this is the Caput Morton Violet it's dark red but it's got a little bit of purple in there as well okay so if we look at the edge of the eye up here um, hopefully when you look at it, you'll be able to see a little bit of sort of like purpley readiness in there. You'll also see this pale blue color in here. And then we've got this very big highlight. We want to keep this highlight isolated. We don't want to be rubbing that out really or scratching it off. Big areas like that we can, uh, you know, keep isolated. Um, and we've also got this down here, which is going to be the, the uh, more black. But I want to bring a little bit of this red color in first. And we're going to be, you can see where we put the blue. Then we've got this area here, which is going to be black. And then from this line here, this is going to be that sort of ready purpley color. So I'm just going to start to bring in a little bit of that uh, color into here. And I'm going to come, you can, there's a little bit of a highlight there as well. But I'm just going to bring the... Um, the Caput Morton Violet in, and I'm going to scoot it underneath, or what should be underneath those little eyelashy bits. Um, if we didn't, and then we tried to bring the slice tool in to bring those uh, those little eyelashes in, if you didn't have anything for them to carve through, you wouldn't see anything. So we have to think about, right, hang on a second, 
um, you know, a few steps in the future, I want to be bringing the slice tool in to bring all of those little hairs in. For me to be able to see the hairs, I need to be able to cu be cutting through a colour. And we need to be thinking inside out, basically. Um, so what's underneath those little um, stray hairs that are coming through there, or the, the eyelashy bits? And um, that's why we need to sort of be thinking a few steps ahead. Rather than trying to um, sit down and draw everything that you can see on the picture, and I know that I know that some people do that and they do it really, really effectively. Um, I just don't have the patience to be able to do that. So for me, I'm always looking at how, um, how can I build my layers, how can I get the texture, how can I get the look and feel of what I'm doing um, in the most simple and effective way for me possible and that's by using these different techniques that I'm I'm sharing with you so I'm gonna just keep going in here you can see um you've got that sort of ready purpley uh color we're going to there's a little bit that comes down here as well we can see down there now if it starts to get a little bit too ready we can bring uh, blue in over the top the blue is going to make it more purpley so if we go back to um you know i think a lot of us <laughs> when we were at school we we know that color mixing so uh, red and blue makes purple um blue and yellow makes green all of that kind of stuff that's all very very um something that we need to be aware of when we're using color pencil when we're using any medium with color because of how the colors mix if we want to get rid of a little bit more of the the vibrancy then we can bring a little bit of the brown in or over the top um and as you use your colours, a lot of people say to me, oh, gosh, I, I don't know how to choose colours. It's really scary. Um, the, the way that I learned how to use colour was just by using it and experimenting and not being scared and seeing what happened and, you know, kind of going wrong. Going wrong is a brilliant way of learning because you do, if you go wrong majorly, you're very likely not to do it again. <laughs> so it's a really, really good thing to go wrong because you learn a, you learn a lesson. Um, okay, so I'm just going to um, um, oh, let me just check that. Okay, yeah, that's working. Okay, right. So I'm going to bring a little bit of the oh, watch your pause slipper. Um, I'm going to bring a little bit of the walnut brown in over the top of that just to sort of bring a little bit more depth in. You can see this area here is what we're keeping nice and clean. Um, and I'm going to bring this next layer in over the top of that red. So still nice and gently. You'll find that the second layer goes down a little bit smoother. It's a it's a really, really um, super surface to work, I have to say, a, a super surface to work. And I love pastel mat. Um, but when you've been working on pastel mat and then you come to drafting film, it's like going on holiday to the most amazing beach and sitting there with a cocktail. That's what it's like coming to drafting film after working on pastel mat. It's the most wonderful experience. It's so nice. You don't have to worry about tooth. You don't have to worry about graininess. You've got other stuff that you have to be aware of and you have to, you know, take into account. But um, not having to worry about, you know, tooth and everything like that. For some people, that is a really major, major um, consideration when choosing their surfaces and, and that's what I really like about pass, uh, about uh, drafting film so this is the the um, the walnut brown that's just coming through in there and then what I want to do now is I just want to bring that black in um, and um, we're going to come over the top of the, the blue area down here we're going to bring some of the black into here um, we're going to just darken it up a little bit. So I'm going to bring black through into this this area here. There's a little bit of, of um, in fact, there is a little bit of light blue in here, which is the the top of the tiger's eye. So let's just take our um, sky blue, which is the one four six. Again, any kind of light blue is going to work really nicely. And I'm just going to sort of um, put a little block of the sky blue in there little block in there kind of bring it a little bit onto that red as well we're just going to make it a little bit more purpley and that's sort of like the top bit of that tiger's eye uh, the white of the eye if you like 
And whilst we've got the, the sky blue, we might as well just bring this little bit around here as well. So I'm just going to bring this bit here. I'm going to bring it around through onto this little area. And then actually, I'm just going to use my um, and cut the end off that because it's got orange on it. Mm. Just going to get my little tombow here um and just i just want to bring a little bit cleaner down there it's a bit... <clears throat> and then just bring that um that sky blue down here as well so it sits against the dark red and the brown there <clears throat> Right, so we're going to take the black and we're just going to bring a little bit of the black up into here. <clears throat> Again, we're going to be thinking about when... Oh, I just need to cough. Hang on a second, sorry. <coughs> we need to be thinking about when we're going to be bringing the um, the slice marks over the top. Sorry about my voice. I, it, um, I get dust in the back of my throat and then my voice goes all funny. Um, so we're just going to come down here. with the black down over the top of this blue you can bring a few little hair lines in if you want <clears throat> so give it a little bit of texture if you want um, and then I'm just going to bring solid black into here So I'm using a little bit heavier pressure. The black you put down wants to be black. If you're putting it down and it's like a mid gray, increase your pressure. This is the thing with drafting film because we're limited to the amount of layers. Then we might as well work with what we've got. So increase our pressure and add fewer layers. So really thinking about color, really thinking about the colors that we're gonna be using. And, you know, cause we, we could go, oh, we'll, we'll just add lots and lots of lovely light layers into here. And then we get to a point where we can't add any more and you can't get the depth and the vibrancy of the black. So you might as well just go straight in. That's my thinking. But we've still got a little bit of the blueiness coming through on the um, on the eyelid bit here. I'm just going to take a little bit. We are going to move when we do this white fur here. We are going to bring a color into that so that we can use the slice tool to create the um, the fur. Okay, so just coming down through here. Nice and smoothly coming around the bottom of that um, eyeball there. And then we're just going to come, uh, yeah, so we're just going to come into this area here, which is. Uh, dark but not quite as dark so that's that bit there this is where I start to get confused now I'm like which bit am I drawing on so this bit is the the bottom bit of the eyeball <clears throat> so if you're using paper um no it depends what paper you're using um you can you can use the slice however um it, it is, it's not going to work in the same way, unfortunately. Um, film is a very unique surface and it is the, the slice is not going to work in the same way. What I would say is if you are using paper, make sure you, you've got your luminance pencils because using a wax-based pencil first is going to have um, a, a significant 
is going to make a significant difference to whether or not you're going to be able to um, get the results with the slice tool. If you're just using the uh, polychromos, you may find that actually you, you don't get good results with the slice tool at all. Um, so, yeah. With, it doesn't really matter with the eye area here because we're not really going to be using the slice tool on here. But when we're using it on these bits here, um, my recommendation would be to, to, to put some waxy um, uh, pencil down first and always double check that, you, um, you know, that you're not going to rip the surface with the slice tool. OK, so just coming down through here. Bring in a little bit more. Get that nice and dark in there. Um, nice and dark up there. I'm just going to colour that in there and then we're going to take those out. You can also use your um, Tombow eraser as well, which works really nicely. Okay, so I'm just going to very gently just take the black up here. I want to get a nice smooth transition of colours. Um, there's a little bit of black in there, there's a little bit of blue in there and there's a little bit of red in there. So I'm just going to swap to my dark indigo. I'm just going to bring a little bit of the dark indigo in here as well. Just make that little bluey, the light blue area just sort of slightly thinner. nice and gently just putting that in there and then I'm going to bring a little bit of that um, Caput Morton Violet just into the edge here as well so we've got a nice mixture of colours coming through we've got this lovely little sort of swirl that comes through here as well I'm just going to bring very gently with that Caput Morton Violet in there. And that will then start to connect to the yellowy colours when we put those in. Um, and then I'm just going to bring this around here a little bit more. Just bring a tiny bit of that red into there, not too much. And then I'm going to bring a little bit of the Caput Morton Violet just onto the edge of the blue here. Again, very gently sort of sweeping it across the bottom. Um, and it's kind of nudging a little bit into that paler blue area with very, very, very gentle pressure. So you don't get a solid red line against it, but you get sort of like a nice graduated, very soft um, bit of red coming through there. Um, to be honest, pressure is one of the biggest um, elements of coloured pencil. If you can control your pressure, um, you're going to find um, coloured pencil techniques much simpler and much less challenging. If you can, if you can get a really light pressure, if you can get a hard pressure, if you can get all the pressures in between. Um, OK, so I'm going to go a little bit of black now. We're just going to darken this bit up here. So again, gently, nice and gently, round and round, we're just going to darken it with the black. This is what I like about the Polychromos Black. It's slightly more translucent. It's not as opaque as other makes. So it means that when you use it to glaze over the top of other colours, you don't lose the colour coming through. You can just darken it. And there's a slightly stronger, again, I'm just going to kind of go whisk that black around and around so we get a soft halo around that top bit there. Um, and then let's just bring a little bit of that through there. And then I'm going to bring some of this black in over the top of that blue as well. I'm going to use some greys over the top here too, 
when we come to draw a little bit of that fur on the top. This is um, very similar to one of the pieces that I've got in the foundations course in the um, in the Ignite membership. Um, we've got a leopard eye in there, um, sort of sort of you know quite similar. So you've uh, if you if you do join me, then you'll have access to to all of that. It's a really really nice tutorial actually. Um, again, using all of these sort of similar similar techniques. So just bring a little bit of that black in here and then we're going to fill that pupil in with the black as well so just going to come in with the black you can see there's like a really um little little bit of light coming through there again i don't need to worry about isolating that on my film if you're on paper you might want to leave a little bit of a um a light area there so i'm just going to come around get that black in there little bit stronger so that it now becomes a you know a really nice rich dark black and of course the blue is going to just make it that little bit more darker okay so there are many roads to Rome um you know all sorts of different ways to be able to get to exactly the same destination uh, and it's just what what works for you really I'm going to bring a little bit more of the dark blue in, the um, the dark indigo. I'm going to sort of swish a little bit of that into the corner here. And I'm just going to bring a little tiny bit, very, very, very gently glaze that in over the top of that lighter blue in there as well. And I'm just going to bring a little bit of that blue in just to get that a little bit darker in there too. And up in this area, just bring that blue in, which is going to darken it and just make it a little bit more purpley as well. Just coming around the edge there. So we've still got the 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 red coming through, but we've we've just added a little bit of a purpley colour in there as well. Okay, so we're now going to start to bring, I think, um, yeah, I'm just going to bring a little bit more of that black around the, the bottom edge here and in here. And then very gently, not too, um, not too hard because I want it to be sort of a, a lighter colour. I'm just going to bring a little bit of the black in over the top of this area here. But you can see where we want to get a bit of texture coming through. With with drafting film, you know, where, where you've got elements of texture and light and all of that kind of stuff, you can get the tiniest of tiniest of tiny details if you have a mind to. Um, we're just going to sort of uh, concentrate on more on the, a little bit on the details, but more on just getting that, the, the realism with the, the values and everything, rather than going into sort of all of these tiny, tiny um, skin details in here. But you can do, the, the film is amazing for that kind of a thing. So just gently, just bringing a little bit of form in there, and then I can go darker down here. Um, let's go a little bit darker in here. Again, we've got some ruddy colour here as well. So we're just going to get that Caput Morton Violet again and just bring a little bit of that through very gently. You can see I've moved my hand back. So sometimes I'm working like that, sometimes I'm working like that. If I work like that and I, I take the pencil right back and I sit it into the into my hand there, I've got less um, less control over it. So and, and it also means I've got less control over my pressure. So I can I can go a lot lighter when I'm when I'm working with my my fingers further back. So I can just sort of gently sort of sketch that colour in. And I've, I'm more likely to get that very, very nice light pressure that I'm wanting. So we'll just pull that into there. And then I'm going to go back in with my black. 
you can see I want to be more specific about where my black's going, a little bit stronger pressure, so my fingers have come higher up the pencil. These, I think, are things that you, a lot of, a lot of people just do naturally. I think as you start to draw, you find your own way and you find your own, the techniques that work really, really well for you. Um, you know, you, you probably follow a, a few different artists and which is great because you can sort of take the techniques that different people do and um, use them, put them together and, and make them your own, which, which is amazing. Um, you know, you might find that uh, one thing that one person uses doesn't work for you, but another thing works really, really well for you. And it's about just taking the stuff that work and that you understand and that fit naturally with your personality, um, you, you know, uh, your environment, all of that kind of stuff is really important that you, um, you know, you, you, you do stuff that works for you because otherwise you'd be battling against battling against yourself. Um, I, I think it's also a really good idea to step out of your comfort, comfort zone and do stuff that you not necessarily find, um, you know, that you find challenging or you might not particularly like because once you, um, once you come out of that comfort zone, you might actually find that there's something, once you've practiced doing it, oh, actually, I quite like doing this and glad I gave it a, a go. I'm doing a portrait at the minute on drafting film of a of a woman um and I find skin tones very difficult to do I'm still pretty new to um humans but I have to say absolutely love them and by drawing humans I've actually improved my animal drawings which is I find bizarre um but um I find skin on um drafting film really hard so I've challenged myself to do it and found a way that that works for me and I'm really, really enjoying it. So I'm so glad that I challenged myself because it would have been very easy for me to say, no, I'm not going to do that. It's I hate doing that. It's I, I'm not going to feel comfortable. Um, and actually, I'm so glad I did because I've learned a huge amount by doing it. OK, so we've got that little light bit coming down there and we're just going to just leave that. There's no point going over that and then scratching it out because actually it's it's quite a big, a big bit. And it's only on that corner there. And I can just darken that. Um, and then I'm just going to come down here with the with the black. Just coming in here. Which is amazing. Okay. Right. So now what I want to do is start to work on the actual insidey bit of the eye. Um, I'm just going to bring a little bit more of that black in there, actually. Things start to come alive when we start to bring all of the little bits over the top. But we're going to start with the inside of the eye. Now, we need to think about the colour that we've got going on in here. So it's quite a yellowy, orangey colour. So I've got a few colours that I think um, are going to work quite nicely. Um... It's not going to be it's not going to be exactly the same, but it's it's going to work quite well. Um, put a little bit of brown in there as well, I think. And right, okay. So I've got brown ochre. One eight two. Not particularly attractive color, but brilliant, a brilliant color. And you, any animal that you've got that's got oranges in it, you want this color in. Um, we have got oh a little bit of terracotta as well, actually. Right in there. A little bit of terracotta, which is the uh, 186, which is more of your bog standard orange. Um, burnt ochre, 187. That's your brownie, sort of more natural orangey colour. Um, light yellow ochre, which is 183. Another really, really good colour. It's actually got a bit of an orangey tinge to it as well. It's that ochre colour. It's got that sort of brownie browniness to it. And then I'm just going to use the uh, walnut brown in there, the 177 as well. OK, so we're going to start off with, I think, um, a little bit of the um, yellow ochre to begin with, the light yellow ochre, so the 183. Really nice, gentle pressure. And the eye is round. 
So we need to be thinking about um, our pencil strokes when we're drawing an eye because we want it to look spherical, we want it to look round. But we also need to think about the texture that we've got going on in there as well. And we can see around the pupil area here, we've got some little spiky bits which we can bring in afterwards. So uh, my initial thought is that I'm just going to go round and round. So I'm just going to go round and round, very gentle pressure. And I'm going to bring a layer of the light yellow ochre in all over the eye. So nice and gently, those little round pencil strokes. Gently, gently around that little um, catch light there. So you don't want it to be bright yellow, you want it to be more of a creamy colour. Very, very gentle pressure, round and round. You can see the other thing that I'm doing as well is I'm keeping my pencil on the surface of the film at all times. This for me is really important because it allows me to keep constant pressure and it also allows me to keep the tip of the pencil constant as well. So I'm not, if I moved this pencil off the, off the film now and then I put it back down again, the chances are the tip of the pencil is going to be slightly different. It's going to land on a different part. And then we can get different elements of um, uh, pressure on there, which will make some bits darker, some bits lighter, maybe a little bit of scratchiness in there. So really important to get that um, where you're just keeping the, the pencil point on the surface of your paper, on the surface of the film at all times. Um, and that's going to really, really help with the consistency of the colour that you're laying down as well. OK, so next I'm going to go in with the Burnt Oco, which is the uh, the 187. Um, now, I this isn't something that I haven't drawn this piece before. It's, I haven't practised it. So I don't have a list down here saying this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. I'm just looking at my picture and I'm going, right, what are we going to put in next? Um, and I tend to go with my with my initial thoughts. So I'm looking at the drawing, I'm looking at the eye, I'm seeing these orangey elements, I'm thinking, right, let's get those orangey elements in. So Burnt Ochre, uh, 187. And again, we can see the orangey bits around the top of the eye up here. So I'm just going to go again, just round and round. Now you might find that it's your pencil skates a little bit. Um, don't worry, you should be able to get your layers in. If, you're, if you can't get your layers in, my suggestion is that you could be using slightly too strong pressure. Um, I know a lot of you are using Duralar, which is a, a fabulous surface. Duralar, you can get multiple layers in. Um, you just have to go gently. Um, so even though it might feel like you're sort of skating around, you, I think you'll probably still be absolutely fine. Um, and then we're just going to come down here, going to bring a little bit of that orange in over the Caput Mortem in there. I'm going to bring it up to that little area where that um, the highlight is there. Bring it round. Okay, we can come um, into this eye area here and just start to, to bring these little spiky bits out. So all I'm be careful not to go into the black because we don't want to bring the black out. Um, so just be really careful about where you're starting your pencil lines, but we can just bring it like it's the sun. So bring those little rays out from the edge there, being quite careful not to take your orange into the black because it will pick the black up and then you get, you'll get your nice oranges sort of contaminated a little bit. Just bring it through like that. Bring a little bit of orange and as soon as you start to, to do things like this the eye then starts to look you know much more realistic as soon as you start to bring depth um color a little bit more not color because of course you can get color isn't gonna, what what's going to make it look real because you can you know you can, you can do black and white and it still looks real but as soon as you start to bring stuff out that makes it look spherical that makes it look round then it really starts to come to life okay i'm going to use my um uh, brown ochre now, which is the 182. And I'm just going to strengthen in some of these areas. I also want to bring some red into here as well. So I'm just going to bring a little bit of that brown ochre nice and gently through. 
just building the um, the intensity of the the eye really. There's a little bit of red in there as well, which I'm going to do with the Caput Morton Violet. So just bring that through there. I'll bring a little bit more into there. What's really important to understand is that you don't have to make your drawing identical to a to the photograph. It's um it's not a it's not a necessity at all. Um, you know, of course you can do, and if it's something that you want to do, then 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 definitely, you know, go ahead. But don't feel that you're uh, you have to follow exactly the same as the photograph. For me, it's about getting the look and feel of what it is that I'm drawing. So I'm just going to bring a little bit of this um, brown ochre down here, and then I want to get some grey down in the bottom bit down here as well, so we get that shadow in. Let's bring some of that down in here. Use these little spots as well. So nice and gently, nice and lightly. Let's bring a little bit more colour into there. Okay. And then I'm going to use the Caput Morton Violet, and I'm going to use the um, I'm going to use the dark sepia. Um, the dark sepia is quite a dark colour, but I want to just bring some of the um, the greys in at the bottom. So Caput Morton Violet, which is the um, the two six three, and we're just going to bring a little bit more of that red in here. So you might want to use a slightly more pressure, just so we get a little bit of that readiness in. So again, round and round. And into there. Okay, and then down here just a little bit. And then I'm just going to come back in with those little... Um, sun rays around the pupil there. Again, just watching that you're not dragging the black out. A bit more of a, a, a shadowy area there. Coming in around there. There's actually some quite strong lines in here. Just taking them in there. And then I'm going to come around the bottom bit down here. Again, just with that Caput Morton Violet, round and round. Getting an idea of the roundness of that eyeball in there as well. And then I'm going to use my dark sepia, which is the uh, the 175. And I'm just going to bring some of the shadows up onto the uh, the bottom of the eye here. So this is a, a dark, a dark grey, and I've purposely gone for the darker grey rather than like a warm grey four because I want to use it gently um, and, I, and I want there to be a stronger colour. So if I went for the warm grey four, I'd have to use it a little bit harder, um, you know, to get the depth of colour. So that's why I've gone for a darker colour, but using it gently. And we just want to be, when you're bringing the, the colour in along the bottom here, we want to make sure that when it... Um, drifts off into the yellow bit of the eye it is a little bit tricky and you can't blend like you like you can on um, regular surfaces oops we just need to um just make sure that um we don't we don't press too hard just went a little bit haywire there uh, because we don't want big sort of strong shapes they'd want to be nice and soft and then i'm just going to come down uh, here. OK, 
go nice and gently. And this is why I prefer to use pencils that aren't quite as sharp because then you get a softer, a softer lay down of colour really. And I'll bring a little bit more of the um, dark sepia through here as well. Nice and gently. Okay, and then um, I'm going to use that warm uh, walnut brown. Um, and just sort of come very gently in over the top again it's more of a glazing just to sort of slightly darken everything and then what we're going to do is we're going to start working on the little catch light highlighty bit and for that I'm probably going to put a sheet of paper underneath so that we lose all of the line art Nice and gently. A little bit up here as well. So we're getting the, just a, a little bit more of the um, a, a darker colour in there. Right, so I'm just going to slip this piece of paper underneath. It's a bit creamy coloured, so... Um, but basically, I'm just going to pop that underneath, and then we can see that we've got this nice uh, highlight area there. We can also see that there are some other little areas that we need to bring out as well. So I've got my Tombow. Um, I've just cut it right across the top, so it's got a sharp edge. Um, and I'm just going to bring a little bit of that in here. Um, and I'm going to bring, I'm just going to clean the edge of it um, and that's something to be very careful about when you're using a Tombow is um, just clean it when you've used it because the pigment gets stuck on the edge and I'm just going to bring a little bit of a highlight in there and I'm just going to pull this bit of a highlight out there and I'm going to bring a little bit out into here as well And I'm just going to bring a little bit more down here. I have to say, match made in heaven, honestly, Tombow slice and drafting film. They're just amazing. So next we're going to use the um, sky blue, the 146. And we're going to bring very lightly, we're going to bring a little bit of the sky blue onto this edge here. So we can still see a little tiny bit of the blue coming through this, this round area. So we're just going to gently just sort of connect that in here and then just bring a little bit into this corner. And then we're going to bring again very gentle blue. Try not to um, interfere with the colour around it, but again a very, very gentle blue just into this edge here. Nice and gently. Which is great. And then I'm going to use the warm grey 4, which is the 273. And we're just going to darken. You see where there's like a little bit of um, a, a slightly darker uh, area in here just before it hits that blue line. And I'm just going to um, I'm just going to darken above where that blue line is. Just bring a little tiny bit of shading in. And I've got that little bit of red that we brought in, that little bit of Caput Morton Violet. I'm just going to kind of connect to that. And 
I've got that little bit of darker shading. And then on the inside of that, again, there's this just little bit of um, little bit of that warm grey four again in there, very, very, very gently. You could almost bring a, a tiny bit of the dark uh, indigo in there as well, actually, just very, very, very gently in there. This is looking super duper. Um, and then um, what we want to do is we want to bring um, a, a little bit of an element over the over the top of that highlight, but not too much. And my thinking is that pr I'll probably use um, a little bit of the walnut brown and a tiny weeny bit of the Caput Morton Violet, which sound, and the Caput Morton Violet sounds a little bit extreme, but if I use it, it's super, super, super light. I'm more likely to get like a bit of a, a soft sort of pinky, pinky colour. Um, so I'm holding it right at the end. Um, and I'm just going to be very, very, very gentle and just stroke a little tiny weeny bit of colour in to the bottom area here very gently so you're almost not touching the surface um, I'm just going to bring a little bit of sort of eye colour in there I'm just going to bring a little bit more of the red through into the eye around the um, around the pupil there a little bit round here just where it sort of sits next to the um, the catch light there. But you can see I'm I'm uh, I, you know I haven't got a massive amounts of control over it, which makes it very 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 soft pressure, which is exactly what you want. So it's just leaving a tiny hint of colour. Um, and then what I want to do is, um, so I'm not going to use the dark indigo because I think that's just going to give us too strong a colour. But I'm going to go back to the sky blue, which is the one four six. I'm just going to I'm just going to bring in. It's almost like we've got um, a ref well, it is. It's a reflection in there, but like grass or trees or uh, probably it's just its eyelashes. So I'm just going to bring a little bit of sort of like the um, a, a, a waft of blue in. very gently and then I'm going to use the um, walnut brown very very gently um, again just to bring a sort of like a an element of something in those little hairy marks that are showing and that then makes me see that I need to go darker in this area here so I'm going to use my walnut brown again just into here just make this darker so this line really stands out okay which is looking quite nice actually and with eyes when you get to a point and you're looking at it and you're thinking oh that looks quite good stop don't do any more just stop <laughs> because it's so tempting to go oh, I'm going to I'm just going to I'm just going to do this or I'm just going to do that and then you just go too far so all I'm going to do now is um and I would say if you're happy with your eye just stop I'm just going to bring a little bit more of that caput morton violet just onto this edge here the thing with eyes is catch lights are super super um important but um, a lot of people think it's just the catch light. So when you see drawings um, and people have just sort of plonked a big, a big bright catch light in the eye, um, to get realism, you need shadow in there as well. So shadow is going to really, really make your eyes 
look realistic. Um, they just are. So having both the light and the dark is really important. So we've got a little bit darker in there. A little bit more red in there. And then I'm just going to take my black again. Yeah, it's only a little one. It's only black. Um, I'm just going to... You might find that you um, you have to kind of come back and just darken some of your colours up. Um, a really good black is the Derwent Drawing Ivory Black, but it's a really fat pencil, but it's a super, super black. Um, and the other thing as well is you might want to just flip your, flip your film and put black in on the back. Okay, and I'm going to put a tiny, weeny little bit of blue in there. Not that you can see it. Um, okay, and then now what we're going to do is we're going to start to come around the rest of the eye so I can, um, I can just move that out. You see how it looks so different when you take the line art away. When you, when you put, when you take the line art away, it's just like, oh my goodness. Also, my, the paper that I'm using behind it is um, slightly creamy coloured, which, which I think really helps too. So let's just carry on down here and then we can start to put some hair in. So I'm going to go black again. Um, let's just fill all of this in down here. It's, um, drawing is, um, sometimes I think people say that they can't draw. Um, but I think if people are given a process, so if you're given um, some tools to help you, you can actually produce some really beautiful work. And it's it's just the most fantastic thing to do um, to get out of your head. You know, if you're a bit of a worrier or, um, you know, you, you, you sort of like, you know, a bit anxious something like that, doing something like drawing is one of the, the best things that you can do to get out of your head because you're concentrating, your hands are moving and you just, you, you know, you just forget everything. You forget where you are. It's it's fabulous. And that is how I first picked up my pencils was purely because of um, stress and I wanted something to help me and I started doing colouring books and it was just the most amazing thing. Um, right, before we go any further, let's just use the slice tool. Now, if you don't want to use the slice tool, that's fine. Um, you can you you could use your Tombow just to we're just going to bring a little bit of uh, catch light into here. I use the uh, manual pen cutter. So this is the manual pen cutter. It's got the orange button and it means that I can uh, bring the blade down or I can put it back up again. The one with the green button is the automatic one. If you've got one with the green button, all you need to do is shove the um, the blade out, put your finger on the button and then wrap a piece of tape all the way around it and it will just stay out. But then make sure that you don't end up cutting yourself on the end. Um, if you've got a slice tool and the end of it is wobbly, um, you can see, I don't know if you can see there, there's two little notches. Just make sure that those notches aren't lined up because if, if, they're, if they're not lined up, the blade wobbles around. So just twist the edge, the end, so that they're not lined up and you should have a blade that's nice and um, nice and stable. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm just going to bring a little bit of these um, this little catch light in here. And I'm going to bring one in here as well. And we're just scratching off the pigment on the um, on the surface of the film, and it it works really really well. Um, right, so back in with the black. Let's get all of this done here. Gosh, what time is it? We've got an hour left, uh, so we're going to get lots of that nice fur done as well, which is great. Um, so just sort of sketch this little bit in here. Uh, the white fur here, we're going to bring some colour and everything in so we can actually get it to look like uh, fur. And um, so this is 
Again, there's sort of quite a lot of texture in the skin area here. Um, so I'm just going to bring up like an, an idea of it in. It's coming down here. And then you can see that that fur drifts out there. The black there. This is quite dark down here. You can see then it starts to lighten again. And we've got some texture in there as well. So just lessen your um, pressure, lighten your pressure a little bit. Always working, if you can see the direction of the fur or you can see texture in the skin, always working with the pattern, um, with the direction of the fur. That way it's going to be much easier for you later on when you're layering. Um, the, the worst thing is if you get hair, I can remember very early on doing a horse and I got, and I know horses, but I'd still got all of the hair the wrong way. On, on its cheek, it was going in completely the wrong direction. Um, and it's, it's, it's really, really hard then when you bring subsequent layers over the top. Because we as humans, honestly, we just, <laughs> we're so good at following along with stuff. If you've got a line, you're just going to follow it. You're just going to, you know, even if you're trying, if you're saying to yourself, no, it's got to go in the other direction, you, we, we just kind of slip into that unconsciousness and off you go and just following the same line. Very often I have rubbed something out gone oh that's not right rubbed it out and then gone and done exactly the same thing um and that's when we're not sort of in that um you know when we're sort of just letting our brain take over i have a i have to switch my brain off <laughs> it's not a helpful brain okay so we're just kind of just wisping that in there can you see how i'm just sort of pulling that black in there nice gentle pressure but i'm being specific about where i want my hairs It's coming down there and then it's just looking really nice actually I'm, I'm pleased with how this is looking and it's funny because it it doesn't it all of a sudden starts to look really realistic um you know you can just sort of glance away and glance back again and go oh it's looking good and this these are things that you need to be doing as well with your with your drawings you know when you're when you're sitting there and you're drawing um if you look at your piece and you think oh gosh that that's looking really good I want you to I want you to tell yourself that it's looking really good. I want you to be sitting there now going, oh my goodness, have I done that? That's that's looking amazing. Because it's really, really important um, you know, to acknowledge when we when you're you're proud of something. And the more you can say it out loud, the more you're gonna get into the habit of being really proud of your work. Um, I sometimes sit and cry. <laughs> You know, if I've done something, I've found it really, really hard to do. And I'll sit there and I'll go, oh, my goodness, look at this. I've done this. It's amazing. Um, and, and I think that's a wonderful thing to do. Be, be you know, really, really proud of, of the work that you're doing. And don't forget that the more you do, um, the, the, the more you'll develop. You know, it's that is that competency thing, um, you know, and, and also having a, a really good idea about what you want your work to look like. And that's what's so fabulous about social media. Um, you know, a, a lot of the time we do compare ourselves, but once you get over comparison, um, you know, looking at somebody who is further along uh, their journey than you are, um, but they're doing what you want to be doing, it's amazing because you can you can just sort of think oh gosh you know they've done that it's possible it's really possible if they've done it it means i can do it what do i need to put in place to be able to get to the level that they're at and that's a really wonderful thing to do and that's what's nice about being in a community as well where you've got lots and lots of people who are at different stages because you've got support and you've got people who've been there before they can you know, they can relate stories and all of that kind of stuff to when they were struggling or when they first started or, you know, um, so, yeah, surround yourself with with people that you you want to be like. And it just it just rubs off. It's wonderful. So I'm surrounded by dogs at the minute. 
That's what I want to be like. And the, one of them is just laid literally upside down. <laughs> Everything hanging out. I'm not sure I want to be like that. But um, they're all very cosy and comfy. So the big Vinny is, um, he takes himself up, off upstairs. When it gets really hot, he just goes and lies on the landing. Bless him. He's, there, he's just there all day. Right, so we get these little bits of fur down in here. We're going to bring some of the um, warm grey into this bit and a little bit of blue as well. So just coming down here. So I'm just I'm just kind of drawing the texture of the fur. I'm I'm sort of you can't really see what it looks like in the photograph. So I'm just sort of um, sketching it in. So I've got those little areas of fur coming in. And then I'm going to put in a little bit of the um, sky blue uh, and I'm just going to waft it over here. So can you see I'm just sort of scribbling it in, just wafting it in. So it's got a bit of a bit of a blueiness in there. And then I'm going to use my warm grey four. Um, oops. And we're just going to bring a little bit of texture in through there as well with that warm grey four. We're limited with colours that we've got because I, I just cho chose a few. But if you, you know, if you've got all of your pencils next to you, you can use all sorts in here. Um, a good one for in here would be something like a Payne's Grey would be quite good. I think I might bring a little bit of the dark indigo in. So a little bit of that dark indigo in here as well. Just where those dark, dark bits are. careful that you don't go too hard with it because it um the 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 indigo the uh, dark indigo does it is quite vibrant on the film um you know if you're used to working on paper and then you work on film um it's like oh what's happened to my colors they go a little bit vibrant just bring a little bit into there as well Marvellous, marvellous, marvellous. Right, okay, so let's start to um let's start to bring a little bit of the colour into the fur area here. Um so let's start up here. Um again, I'm gonna use my dark blue and my black, and we're gonna work into these areas here. So we're gonna bring the um the dark stripe in first, and I'm gonna use my dark indigo. Um so I can't really see the direction of the fur, but if we take it that we can see the direction of the fur of the white fur on both sides, it's kind of coming this way. It doesn't really matter, um, but it, it's quite nice, you know, to sort of go it in that direction. And again, we want to sort of come in over the lines. Coming in that way. So we've got the we've got the line art, but I want you to go over the line art. I want you to sort of have it a little bit sketchy um, rather than just filling it all in with with a with a solid shape. It wants to be this nice, soft kind of shape um, and you're, you're going over the line. So forget what you were <laughs> what you were told when you were coloring in. Um, you know, don't go over the lines. We want to go over the lines because we want it to have that nice sort of random randomness to it because fur is random and it doesn't just sit it you know within a within a an object within a shape so we're just going to come through there sort of gently bring that in there you can see i'm getting a little bit of the texture from the surface of the paper that i've got on there it's um so i might bring my um uh, my piece of plain paper in there again um, okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use my warm grey four and I'm going to start to bring a little bit of that in on the white fur. Um, and I'm going to sort of just follow a little bit of kind of how the fur is working. Very, very sketchy. So it's going to be messy. I'm kind of not, I'm not drawing all of the little hairs, but I'm just sort of drawing the texture of it. I'm not going to be really specific and really careful. I'm not going to be going, oh, I'll just put a bit in there and a bit in there. I'm just going to move my fingers back and I'm just going to go, do you know what? I'm just going to whack these little bits of fur in. 
um, like this, come up here. I find if you've got a little bit more freedom with your fur and when you're when you're sort of creating those initial layers, you get more life into your fur. And then it doesn't, nothing becomes perfect. Nothing becomes like everything's in exactly the right place and it's all, you know, absolutely perfect. We've then got a little bit of scruffiness. We've got a little bit of movement. We've got a little bit of life. And with a wild animal like a, a tiger, you know, he's not going to be groomed and all of that kind of stuff. His hair's going to be all over the place. So we're just going to bring that in there. And yes, this is white fur that we're drawing, but to get the white the whiteness of the fur um because we're going to use the subtraction technique uh we've got to put something in to be able to take out and this can be a little bit um um confusing frustrating what on earth is going on um subtraction is where we take something out to create something so when i use my eraser I'm not rubbing something out and putting something in. I'm putting texture in. I'm putting a highlight in. I'm putting white fur in. Um, that's how I see the subtra subtraction technique. Um, and I'm just going to come in over the over the top here, and we're just going to bring that um, that warm grey four in here as well. And because what we're going to do here is going to use the tombow and a little bit of a slice, but I'm going to use the tombow mostly. Again, we just want to be working. We've got a little bit of orange up there as well, actually, so we can use a bit of the um, bit of the uh, burnt ochre up here. Coming in there, and then back to that warm grey four. Just nice and just randomly bringing that fur in, but we can see the direction it's growing. Bring that in there. And then over the top of the eye, I think I'm going to bring a little bit more blue in there as well, actually. And then this area here is a little bit scrubby, so we're just going to sort of sketch that in, get that in there as well. Okay, um, and then let's just get a little bit more of the blue in this side here, get this bit of the black in here, and then we can start to strengthen the dark elements up. Um, so again, let's just come in over the top. very much about trust in the process <laughs> um you know even when you get to a even when you get to you know where, you, where, where you've been drawing every day for seven years <laughs> and, you, and you sit there thinking oh my goodness is this going to work you know it's going to work because it's always worked before and it's going to look amazing and that's what's um that's what I love about colour pencil you know it just looks so dreadful to begin with <laughs> And then it just goes, ta-da! <laughs> it's almost like it's having a bit of a joke with you. <laughs> I was only joking. It's going to be amazing. Um, I'm going to take the uh, dark indigo again, and we're just going to pull a little bit of the these bluey areas into here, and then we're going to darken those uh, those dark bits too. And then we're going to start to bring some of that nice fur in. The darker you can get this white fur, the better, uh, because the more you're going to be able to see the white areas when you pull them out. So if you've if you've been sort of thinking, oh, well, I'll just I'll, I'll just I won't bother going too dark. Um, when you start to bring those uh, highlighted bits in, you're not actually going to see them very well. So you're better off making it slightly darker than um, than what you think. And then we can pull those highlighted bits out. So I'm just going to come through there, um, a little bit in there. Bit messy. There's probably a little bit of pink in there as well, actually. A bit in there. 
and then we're just going to bring some in over the top of the eye we can actually see i think the um how the eye works around here we can see the the top bit of the eye so we're just going to bring a little bit more of that blue in here And then we can be really nice and careful when we're bringing those highlighted bits in. And start scraping all over our beautiful eye. A little bit more in there. That's it. Okay. Um, right, so let's get a little bit of black into these dark areas here. So we've got the polychromous black again. In fact, let's just bring that, um, just pull that, uh, there we go. And then we're not, we're not sort of uh, limited by the line art then. I want to get this nice and dark in here. When you're using film as well, the colour of the uh, the background surface, it, it does make a difference. So you can see going from white to cream, um, it's added an extra element behind the, behind, well, uh, behind the eyeball when I take it back out again. So it, it just adds a little bit of richness. Also makes the hair look a little bit creamier than... than um, than it is so that's something to be really careful about you know if you're thinking oh I'm, I'm when I finish mine I'm going to put it I'm going to put this color behind it make sure that that you're using that color on a regular basis behind you slipping that piece of paper behind your work on a regular basis because otherwise you're going to get get to the end you're going to slip the piece of paper that you want behind it and it's going to look different particularly if it's something like a black piece of paper and you've got white um white bits in your drawing um because I can guarantee your white bits, you're going to have missed loads of them out. Because, <laughs> um, of course, you can't see them, you know, if you're using white behind. So um, always make sure that you decide. Well, you don't have to decide right from the beginning. But if you're thinking, oh, I, I'm, I think I might put black behind this relatively early on, then, um, you know, start putting it behind because it does make a difference. OK, so we're just going to come through in here such a lovely surface to work on it really really is um kind of coming down to this bit down here and then i'm going to bring some up into here as well And then we're going to get the Tombow out and we're going to start just having a play around with some of that fur. I'm not going to get the whole thing finished, but, um, you know, you'll be able to use all of these techniques um, to, to finish off the rest of the fur. So you'll be able to do exactly what we're doing now to get um, to get rid of all of the... Um, you know, to do all of the other bits of film. So I think somebody's just asked, how do we frame uh, film? So whenever I'm doing a piece on film, well, any any piece of work that I do for a client, I always have it mounted or matted. Um, it, it just looks more professional and it, 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 it posts better as well. You know, you don't have to worry about things sort of, we still have to worry about them getting bent, but, you know, it just, I think it just looks a little bit better. So, um yeah, so I, I I mount I mount my pieces. Um, with film, it's very important not to strap your film down because it does move around. So just having a piece of tape at the top, and you can hinge it so you can you can attach it to the backing board, or you can attach it to the um, you know your your mount board, your mat board. You can even use those little photo corners 
you know, you can get those little sticky photo corners because they've got you, you've got then wriggle room in there, and it can kind of contract and expand. Um, can, well, whatever it is, <laughs> it can contract and expand. I think are the same thing. Um, so yeah, it is really really important not to um, not to strap it down, and then you just frame it as normal. Um, you know, so uh, yeah, we made the we made the mistake. The first piece of film that I that I did or that I did a portrait on, we strapped it down and it went all wrinkly and awful. So um, it had to be reframed. Okay, so I'm just going to bring a little bit more of black into there, and then we're going to have a play around with um, the Tombow. So my tombow here i've also got a brush so this is just it's not a special brush you can get special brushes but you pay a premium for a special brush this one i nicked off my daughter it's just a, a big blusher brush uh, and we're just going to start to bring in some of these some of these hairs so i've got my tombow and i'm going to use it as i would a pencil so i'm just going to bring some hairs in um through but i'm going to be really careful that I continually, can you see how you get the little bits of um, uh, pigment on there? I'm just going to come onto a piece of paper. I've just got a piece of paper above me and I'm just going round and round just to get rid of the uh, pigment. Um, and that's what we're going to do. And we're just going to bring little hairs through. So I'm starting in the white, pulling it out. I can use my brush just to um, just get rid of that. Um, the Tombow is a, a a slightly softer way of bringing hairs in. So, of course, we've got the slice tool. The slice tool is amazing at bringing texture and everything like that in. But I would definitely recommend um, being careful with the slice tool if you're if you're uh, creating anything that's got relatively soft fur. I'm not saying a tiger's got really soft fur, but, you know, it looks sort of softish. Um, the slice tool is a is a hard knife, so it's going to give you sharp lines. The Tombow is going to give you much, much softer um, texture. So it's really, really nice for things like hair. Um, and then I'm just going to you can see I'm just using it like a pencil. Just a white pencil, that's all it is. So think of it as a white pencil and you're putting highlights in rather than rubbing something out. And I'm just gently bringing in the lovely little bits of um, texture in there. The other thing that I do is I keep my hand quite still. So I put my wrist on the surface and then it's just my fingers that are moving. It's not my whole wrist. And I'm also quite good... I think I'm also quite dexterous with my pressure and what I want is that nice sort of fluid movement. So you'll you'll notice with my work I do tend to go quite speedy but it's not really speedy it's more a case of being not really careful <laughs> not really careful about what I'm doing. But if you you'll you'll notice that if you kind of are really really gentle and oh gosh I've just put a little bit in there Ooh, a little bit in there your nose gets closer to your drawing you then become fixated on a tiny tiny part of your drawing and you you just you lose out on all of the movement and everything and the, and the life and stuff and you don't want that you want this lovely life you want this lovely movement in your fur um so i sit back an awful lot of the time so when i work yes there are some times when i work very very close to my piece but a lot of the time i'm i'm about I'm about nearly two foot away from my drawing. Um, that way I can really, really see uh, how things are working, you know, um, what I need to change, whether my values are correct. So try not to be, you know, nose to paper all of the time. It's very easy to get like that and be become so fixated in getting all of the details and everything correct. And that's one of the things that I've really learned. It's not about the detail. It's about the the darks and the lights. Um, so this is this is starting to look really nice very very quickly. Now we need to come into this area here. We need to work on this bit, and this is definitely going to be 
um, more of using that slice tool, I think, particularly when it comes to over the eye areas here. And we do need to be careful with that. But to start off with, I'm going to use my Tombow. I am being a little bit careful, more careful here, because we're obviously talking eye area and um, we've put a lot of effort into that. Where you can, when you're putting hair strokes in, if you can take your strokes in the direction of the hair growth, that way you tend to naturally get that lovely tapered hair rather than um, a straight line. You'll get something that starts thicker and then drifts off. If you go the other way, um, you get more of a thicker line. Sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes it's like, oh, do you know, I've got to go the other way because unless you've got a spinning drawing board. Um, but um, yeah. So try to go in the direction of the fur. So we're going to bring a few of these little uh, hairs in down here. I'm going to keep my Tombow really clean. Um, otherwise, we're going to end up with sort of uh, dirty marks rather than um, hairs. And I'm going to try and get quite a few of the hairs to be more uh, from the Tombow rather than the slice tool, just on the top bit of the, the eye here. And then we're going to bring the slice tool in over the top. So I'm just going to bring a little bit of that in there, just because it gives you softer hairs um, rather than the spiky, scratchy slice. So I'm just bring a little bit of that in there. Okay, right, so slice tool. And again, we just need to be really, really careful with what we're doing here. If you want to watch first and then do it, or if you don't want to use your slice tool, that's absolutely fine. So I'm just going to bring this in here and we're just going to look at how these hairs work. Again, we want to try and get them done in one. And the initial slicing is terrifying. And then when you've done a couple, it's like, oh, what was I worried about? Um... So especially when you come over something like an eye that you've spent ages doing and then you've got to get these hairs coming. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to come through here. You see I'm kind of going in the direction of the growth and it's really hard because it's not natural for my hand to go that way. Let's go that way there. Bring these little white bits in. We're actually going um, almost sort of like um, horizontally across, aren't they? Going across there. across there. Let's bring a little bit in there. So I tend to hold my slice tool upside down. And again, use it as like a like another pencil, really. Um, and it tends to work quite nicely. Uh, I'm just going to get the Tombow back out. Oh, let's see. Let's clean that off again. And I'm just going to soften um, some of these areas again here. So I'm just going to come into here. Soften. And then I'm going to bring my black in above it. Bring the black in and um, and just bring a little bit more depth into above the eye there. So I've got a black here. And you'll find where you put the slice tool and then you bring more colour, it's almost like you've created an indent so it'll just work around those little slice marks. It's not going to do the same on if you've, if you've used an eraser. So if you've used an eraser, then the, your black is still going to sort of sit in over the top of that. 
but it's um, it's going to work around your slice marks. And that's why using the slice toy is great for things that have got really strong texture because um, you can then start to really work in uh, some of those little areas for the, um, the shadows and everything. It works really, really, really well. Just a little bit in there. And I'm just going to come around here as well just to darken that up slightly. Let's bring a little bit more of those shadowy bits in. She's looking good. Yeah, that's looking really, that's looking really nice. Um, so just soften those a little bit more. And then let's just come down oops, along the bottom part here. So we've got around about half an hour left. So let's just sort out this bottom part here um, before it comes into the brown and get this, this element here in. So I'm gonna now use the, um, the warm gray four again. Um, again, we're just gonna be uh, following the direction of the fur and I'm going to bring more warm grey in than um, than you would think for, for white fur just because we want to get the, the texture and everything in there so I'm just going to bring that through we obviously know it's not grey but we want the intensity of the colour to be, be able to then get the, the white to, to sit on the top of it now what you can do is you can sort of sketch in a little bit of the texture so it's not a case of filling all of the um, all of this this white area in here with grey. Um, my feeling is get a little bit of that texture in so it and then it kind of looks nice as you're drawing it rather than just sort of shading it all in grey. You know start to bring a little bit of the darks in there. Um, really look at how the fur is growing. So we're, we're kind of coming up and then it's just sort of drifting off into this darker area here. Coming through there. Coming in there. Okay. And then I want to bring a little bit of black in around this bottom bit here as well. And then we can look at um, using the, the Tombow and the Slice again just to get the texture of that hair coming through. Coming in there. nice and gently as we come in there and then we can just bring a, a little bit of orange into here as well so we can use the um, uh, burnt ochre and we're just going to bring a little bit of the orange but I'm actually going to sweep it the other way um, which goes against everything I've just said to you but only because I want a little bit of that orange to go through into the grey so we're just going to bring a little bit of that in there Now, stupidly, I didn't. Oh no, we can. We can actually. I'll use the. Um, I'll use the uh, walnut brown. So we'll just we'll put the orange on first, and then we can get these little black, uh, little black bits of fur, and then um, work a little bit of the walnut brown in, and um, and then we'll we'll call it a day. I've got a little um, little surprise for you all as well before you go. Um, well, I think it's an exciting surprise. <laughs> you might not. Um, I think it's very exciting. Uh, so yeah, before before you go, before we finish, I will um, I'll 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 let you know what that is. So yeah, just bringing that little bit of orange through there. Um, we can bring a little bit of black into here as well. I'm not going to bother with the blue on this bit. I'm just going to take the black in. Obviously, we need to still work on these bits here, but hopefully, you can really see how that that fur has worked on there. Um, and how, you know, if you were to, if you were to sit 
and work on on these pieces on your own and you you know you're listening to an audio book or you're listening to music or you're watching a film or whatever you can see how um it, it's not it's not hugely complicated it's just understanding how the um the processes work how the techniques work um using something like a line art uh, is a is is amazing and it's a it's a tool that you can use you don't have to use it you can freehand if you want um but using a line art is it's it just it just lets you get to the good bits you know and um but you also you have to understand about the concept of drawing and you have to understand about uh, values and shape and structure of things to be able to get a good result anyway. So, you know, by starting with a line art, it doesn't guarantee you a, um, a perfect finish. And half of the time, line arts, they just confuse the heck out of me. And I have to, especially with drafting film, I just cover them up. Because I'm like, oh, God, I, I, don't, I just don't know what I'm doing with this bit. Um, let's just put a little bit of these black bits in here as well. These little black black areas. You can see they go in, they're, they're just really sort of quite rough, these little spots. Very much like if you were doing an oil painting and you were just sort of plotting in, um, you know, plotting in these different elements and then you just refine it as you work through. Um, okay, and then I'm just going to bring a little bit of the walnut brown in here as well. So the walnut brown is a 177. Um, and um, I'm just going to bring a little bit of that into here. And then we've got walnut brown and we've got the orangey colours coming through there as well. We'll probably spend more time with with this area, really kind of working those colours in. So can you see where I'm putting my brown, I'm leaving gaps. And what's nice about that is that automatically you're getting to see some of the oranges coming through, some of the oranges mixing with the brown, some of the brown is sitting on its own. So really um, working your texture and leaving these little gaps enables you to get all of those different colours in, particularly with fur like this, where it's sort of mottled, um, you know, leaving those gaps as you bring in the colour in. It's going to really, really help you get all of those different colours um, to show in an easy, an easy technique, an easy way to do it, um, you know, rather than worrying about, you know, how am I going to get this colour over that and all of that sort of stuff. So. And I can just bring a little bit more of that orange colour in the burnt ochre and we can just do exactly the same. You can either glaze over the top or, you know, you can just bring some of those extra hairs in. And then what you would do is you just keep building. You just keep going um, with your layers. And then once you've got a few layers in, you'll all this will be covered up. And you can then start to refine areas and you can go, oh, I just want a little bit more darker there. Or that wants to be a little bit more orange. Um, you know, you might want to use a little bit of your slice tool to create a little bit more texture. Um, not sure it's overly necessary with this kind of fur, but it's just about recognizing the texture right from the start. Um, you know, and um, yeah, and not being scared of, of just trying stuff. Okay, right. So I'm going to just pop the, um, the paper behind here again oops okay it just softens it a little bit I think with that cream behind there um and what we're going to do is I'm going to use the slice tool again just because um oh and I want to use the black a little bit in there as well um just because it's um just because of the the quality of the fur and I'm just going to come in with the black um just off the edge of the little uh, eyelid here just bring some of that black in So again, it's just just gentle sweep brown. There's a bit, bit of a curve. So that's another really um, good tip for realism. Um, when it comes to hair, really look at the shape that the hair is making, the curve, the angle it's on. Um, look at the length of it. So if you're drawing a Labrador, make sure that your hair isn't really long. It's nice and short. You don't want an awful lot of detail on something like a Labrador because it's a smooth haired animal. So you, you want to get the idea of the smoothness, which is just going to come more from blocks of colour rather than lots of um, hair details. 
Um, something that's got lots of texture like this, the, the tiger here, then, then bringing some of that hair detail in is a really good idea. Um, you know, because then it really does showcase that, uh, that texture. So I'm just going to come back in here from these little dark blobs that we put in, just refine those a little bit. You can see we're, we're really working with the, with the texture. Just these sort of simple, simple lines. It's coming in through there. Coming in through there. So we've um, we've got a quarter of an hour left. So if you do have any questions, do um, do please ask. Vicky can just send send them to me. Um, you know, if you've got any questions or anything, and then um, you know, if you're worrying about finishing this, just use the the techniques that we've that we've been using all the way through. Give it a go. You know, be a, be a little bit brave. Don't 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 worry about stuff. Don't worry about getting anything perfect. I am the furthest away from being a perfectionist. I think that you possibly can get. <laughs> and I think that's that's one of the reasons why I've stayed really very much in love with my drawing because I, I, I never aim for perfection. I aim for just thoroughly enjoying the process and just loving the just loving drawing. I, oh, honestly, I cannot wait to get to my drawing board every day. I cannot wait. Um, and yeah, you know, I do procrastinate sometimes, but the majority of the times I'm just like, oh, I just cannot wait to sit down and start drawing. And it's like a it's like um. I don't know it's just like a a big warm hug as soon as I sit down on my chair I've got a lovely sheepskin on my chair as well and and it's just like oh this is just the most wonderful thing in the world um you know and it's it's important to it's important to give yourself time as well a lot of the time we, we're a bit mean to ourselves I think and we don't give ourselves the time that we um you know that we need to be able to to be able to recover from just you know, just going to the supermarket, for goodness sake, I need to recover. <laughs> I'm, I'm a very sociable person, but I'm also very much an introvert. And, I'd, and I, I, I love sitting here on my own with lots of people around me all over the world. But I can't see you. <laughs> and we're all sitting and drawing and it's wonderful. But put me in a room full of people um, who I don't know. Um, and we're not necessarily doing something that like drawing or something like that. I, I, yeah, I, I need to recover from that. So supermarket, I need to sit and recover. <laughs> and that drawing helps us do that. Um, so big questions. Um, my sharpener. My sharpener that I use is, a, we haven't used it today at all, actually. The Swordfish Multipoint. Honestly, I could not do without it. It's a, it's a monster of a sharpener. It's huge. Um, but I could not do without it. I just... It's funny when I first um, when I first started drawing, and I heard about people using electric sharpeners. I was like, "What do you think you need to use an electric sharpener for?" I had a little crank one. Now I've got one. Oh my! I could not live without it. You literally just stick your pencil in it. It's sharp. It's wonderful. You don't have to do anything. It's brilliant. Um, and then why film versus pastel mat? It's a, it's a it's another surface. I'm just going to move over to my um, the brown and the orange. So the walnut brown and the orange again. It's it's another surface. Um, sometimes you want a surface where you can um, you see. We we haven't even had to use the slice in here. Actually, we've just used our pencil backwards and forwards. Um, you know, sometimes you want to use a paper where you want to use the slice tool, or you want to um, really get really get in there with the details. Uh, but quite quickly, sometimes you just you you don't want to have the um you know the 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 graininess i absolutely adore pastel mat i i love it 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 is definitely my favorite surface um but sometimes sometimes you want a break or you want to challenge yourself for doing something or it could just be that you absolutely flip in love one or the other um some people love pastel mat can't stand drafting film some people can't stand pastel mat and love drafting film or they love their hot press papers or whatever um for me drafting film is 
uh, much more of a challenge than pastel matte, much more of a challenge when I'm drawing smooth surfaces uh, because I can't blend stuff. I, I can't blend stuff like I would blend um, on pastel matte. So this girl portrait that I'm drawing at the moment, this is the burnt ochre that I'm using here. The girl I'm drawing at the moment, she's got very, very smooth skin. Um, but actually there are sort of like little mottly areas in her skin. I find it really difficult to get those little mottly areas in her skin. Whereas with pastel matte, I could just literally just smudge it in and it would be perfect. Not perfect, but it'd be, you know. Um, whereas I can't do that on, on drafting film. But there are other, other things on drafting film where it's just like, oh my goodness, this, you know, not having to draw multiple, multiple layers. So not having to spend a, a huge amount of time drawing tons and tons of layers um, or putting up with a, a, a piece of pastel mat that is like super um, grainy, which is, a, which is a horrible experience. Um, you know, so it's 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 kind of what you love, um, but it's also you know qu quite nice to quite nice to do something if it's if it's got lots of texture and everything and it works really quite nicely on um, on drafting film. Um, I'm just going to get my warm grey four out again. I'm just going to bring a little bit of texture in along here, just gently just pulling that down. In there, so we've got so it's not finished, but we've got a bit more of a finished edge there. You can see again, I'm just sort of doing these little um, curves coming through there. I'm going to just bring a little bit more of the orange into here, so the burnt ochre. I'm going backwards and forwards, so we're getting a really nice connection with the uh, the white hairs here. Um, okay, and then Vicky's saying, when when does Ignite open? So Ignite opens tomorrow, uh, 12 o'clock. However, and, I, and I'm, I'll put it in the chat for you, if you would like to join now, which is really exciting and I'm so excited that I've got new people joining me because I, I honestly I'm I'm just I just want everybody to draw and get the, the the benefits of drawing if you would like to join this afternoon you can uh and I'm going to give you a link in a second and you will be able to join if you want to and you'll be able to get in before anybody else um which is very exciting <laughs> um and it's not something that I've done before I have to say um, and then I thought, oh gosh, you know, so many people are, uh, I know so many people are excited about joining. Um, and it is exciting because it's, you know, it's a, it's just, uh, you know, drawing is just the most wonderful, wonderful thing to do. And if you can, if you can, if you can, you know, build your skills and everything, you can take it wherever you want. You know, it can just be, it can just be something that you love doing a couple of hours a day or a couple of hours a week or it could be something that completely changes your life like it completely changed mine um you know so i am going to give you the link in a second in the um in the chat and i'll also put it on the screen as well for you actually um and then if you would like to join i would absolutely love it um if you um if you came and if you came and join me a day early so that's I think that's really, really exciting. It's really exciting for me. Um, OK, so you can see how we're building this up here. I'm just going to I'm just going to pop it in the chat now for you. And then we'll just come back and we'll do our last five minutes in here. Um, so I'm going to take that and copy that. Oops. And then put it in here. Um, here we go. Link coming now. So if you would like to join me, you may. And I'm also just going to pop it. I'm going to put it, I'll, I'll put it on the screen, but um, here we go. I'd copy it out of the, um, I'd copy it out of the chat if I were you, or just click on the chat there. Um, rather than, because if you get the wrong, if you kind of copy it differently, but I'll, I'll um, let me just pull that down a little bit as well, actually. I'll pop it up there. 
Okay, and then we can, um, and then we can just a little bit more of this browniness down here. And I'd, I'd love to see um, pictures of, of this tiger's eye. I'd love to see how you got on. Uh, I'd love to hear how you got on. So if you, um, if you want to tag me or you want to give it a hashtag in, um, uh, in, in Instagram, just you can put hashtag Bonnie's uh, tiger eye something like that but yeah do tag me um because I'd, I'd love to see it i'd love to see how you've got on and then if you just want to carry on and you want to keep building just think about your hairs just think about how your hairs are working think about the length of the hair think about the direction of the hair think about the density of the hair let's just um let's just get this a little bit stronger up here um you know and and you can either leave it as it is here which is, is still actually really really nice or you could do the the square um or you could download your all uh, your own tiger picture and and create your own one um you know it's it's hopefully you've really enjoyed this session um i know teaching on drafting film for me it, i think is one of the most rewarding things because we're not having to battle with oh well you know we need to smooth this out and we need to smooth that out and it's actually a really lovely surface to teach on because we don't have all of the the, the issues and stuff with that, um, you know. So I'm I'm hoping that you've I'm hoping that you've enjoyed this session. I certainly have. It's one of my most favourite things to do is um, is teaching and drawing. Um, so yeah, and chatting. Uh, can't think of anything better. <laughs> uh, so I'm just going to bring a few more little black bits into here. Um, you into there and you could bring a little bit of red into here as well if you wanted you know or different oranges as well um so if i've got i've got some quite bright oranges i've got the cadmium orange here so you could bring a little bit of that cadmium orange in which is just gonna watch the cadmium orange over the top of the black because it may well go a bit green but you could just bring some of those you know, and just sit there and just draw some of these, just these little, little tigery hairs. And it's, it's just, it's not, it's not tricky. Um, you know, it's, yes, we're layering, but it's, it's not, um, it's not layering where you, you've, you know, you've, you're sort of mixing colors and you've got to get this right. You've got to get that right. It's all texture. And for me, when it, when it comes to, uh, sort of drawing fur, texture textured fur i think is one of the simpler ones to draw when it comes to drawing smooth fur that's a different matter um you know because you you have got to be really careful but textured fur is just so lovely to draw um you know uh so um yeah so i'm i'm hoping you've enjoyed it um i can't wait to see some of your uh pieces um I do hope that some of you joined this afternoon. I hope that was a nice surprise that you get in early, <laughs> uh, which is very exciting. You, you can start your journey today rather than wait until tomorrow. Um, and yeah, and it is only it is only open for a week this time. Uh, so it will be closing next uh, be closing next Monday. And this time as well, I've, I've added some extras for um for, for for people just joining i've added some extra live draw alongs so that we get drawing or we start drawing really quickly um obviously i've got my foundations course which is amazing um and uh, hopefully people will will kind of work through that but some of these live draw alongs that i've i've got i've got another i've got some eyes that we're doing i've got some more fur furs on drafting film the eyes on pastel mat um and I've just I've, I've arranged those live streams for the next I think they start. Might start next week, I can't remember, but we've got a couple of extras. So all of the my normal live streams and then I've got extras for um, new people starting with me and any of any of my existing members if they want to um, if they want to join in as well, um, which is amazing. You know, and it just means that um, you get you get drawing and, and that's really important. So just a couple of little. Um, Slicey marks in here just to get that hair coming out a little bit more. I'm just going to whisk that away. Once you get going with your slice tool, it's um, you know, it's those initial first marks that it's a bit a little bit scary. Um, 
but just so that we're, our hair is like, like nice and random, nice random flyaway hairs. So I think he's worked out really, really well, this tiger. I think his eyes looking really nice. We could flip it and darken everything again um, if you wanted to. But um, I think I'm, I'm really happy with how this has worked out. Um, you know, we didn't get him finished, but I think what we've done here, I think, has worked really, really well. So, um, yeah, hoping to see some of you, hoping to see some of you in the membership, which would be absolutely amazing. And hoping to see lots and lots of these uh, gorgeous tiger eyes on um, social media. Um, you know, either as we've got it. Oh, gosh, that's my phone that's dropped on the floor. Either as we've got it here or um, or finished, um, you know, it would be really, really nice. But I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you all so, so much for joining me. Um, I absolutely love teaching live. It's, it's just, it just brings me so much joy. Um, and I hope to see you all really, really soon. Bye.